So whoever has ticket, who has, has tickets, make sure we get them. Okay. And there's just two. There would have been many more. If, okay. God, man. I want to thank those who asked me to say a few words to try to put in context something about women from a spiritual frame of reference as well. Not that the others won't do it as well, but I was asked to do this. I'll do it very briefly, and then we'll hear from persons that I will introduce and present in just a minute. When you hear me talk about angels, I'm not talking about sweet, nice, pretty. That's right. No, I'm talking about courageous. I'm talking about women who are not only on the move, but women who have stood up in time and in history and changed the course of history. In the context of the Bible, when one talks about messengers, one looks at the angels. We sing a song here entitled, The Angels Are Watching Over Me. And it's significant in regards to the Old and New Testaments because what it is, it's about messengers who are called angels who protect, who prevent, who appear in events like the Moses story or the Red Sea story. Angels constantly moving in events with people articulating and interpreting. And there's no doubt about it, in the New Testament, like in the Old Testament, the, 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 the first few chapters of those testaments will lay claim to more angels being talked about than other segments, perhaps, of, of either of the testaments. It is because in the Old Testament there was folklore, folks, people, telling the story about the angels, and they made sure that those angels had the phenomenal expression of being somewhat divine and human. So the angels were, that's not divine. So the articulation is that there is a debate, perhaps, not so heavy, but still some discussion going on about the angels. Who are they, and what are they? Are they, are they just solely? emissaries of God? Well, if they are emissaries of God, are they solely spiritual? Are they also human? I, I contend that angels come in many forms. And they come in human and divine ways. And we must accept the fact that when they come, they're going to say something to us. Because why? They're messengers. If a messenger comes to you, the messenger just doesn't stand there and say, well, no, the messenger says, I am here because I want to warn you. I want to tell you. I want you to understand. I've got something for you. I bring you good tidings of great joy. And so that's what the messengers do. And as the messengers contend with history, what we see is that in the New Testament, a great messenger... The angel Gabriel comes to Mary, one of the most beautiful stories in the Bible, and tells her, be not afraid. Stop being afraid. It's the same thing that we can hear today. Don't be so scared. Can't you live your life? Do you always have to be down and out and victimized by circumstances? Do you always have to go around with your head down and your heart heavy and your mind going in all kinds of directions? Can't you have some clarity every once in a while? Can't you stand up? Don't be afraid. Be yourself, but don't be afraid. And so... 
the angel says to Mary, don't be afraid. You're going to have a child. It will be a holy child. Call him Jesus. And she said, oh, my God. <laughs> she said, I haven't even been with the man I'm going to get married to. Angel said, don't worry about it. We got it fixed up, right? <laughs> I have a friend years ago who used to walk around and said, well, I don't know how I got pregnant. She often used the Mary story. <laughs> don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Stop being afraid. Don't you know you're about to give birth to a new people? To a new person? Don't you know that you're going to be new? You're going to be pregnant and in some time you're going to be birthing your life? Can't you understand that? And well, the important thing that the angel and Mary did, when Mary found out about it, she goes down to see her friend, her close friend, Elizabeth. And they meet each other. And when they meet each other and greet each other, Elizabeth is pregnant also. And all of a sudden, the baby began to jump and, and kick in her womb. And she said, oh, Lord, what's happening to me? And all of a sudden, the message was, this is the Holy Spirit. That baby's alive and kicking and jumping. Don't you know that? When the spirit comes, you know, folks, oh, Lord, we can't do this because it's, you know, we're in the womb of the church and we can't act out anything. We, life comes with babies kicking and jumping. I know because I remember when I kicked and jumped in my mother's womb. I can tell you that my mother knew she was getting something out of the ordinary because when I came out, I was yelling and screaming and I'm still yelling and screaming. <laughs> And finally then, if they're mess women are messengers, the Lord is with you. Don't you know that? No matter what you face, the Lord is with you, with us. Don't be afraid. The Holy Spirit will come upon you. Blessed are you among women. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. Messengers of life, that's who they are. Messengers of peace, that's who you are. Messengers of courage and good news, messengers of glad tidings, messengers of good love and great hope, messengers of sorrow, messengers of healing, messengers of weeping. Oh, Mary, don't you weep and don't you moan. Messengers of shouts and yells and messengers of stuff, like the beating of the drums and, 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 and like pianos and horns playing. Like instruments, women singing their song, as Jan will talk about. Hand clapping women, liberation women, justice women who profoundly experience and, pro -pro and provide justice. Emancipation, women who are in emancipation, women who are redeeming the world. Yes, it is liberation time. It is emancipation time because the messengers who come to us are letting us know that they have a message that we must hear and we must understand and we must respond to. Thank God for the women messengers. 